Hey everybody, welcome. This is the KCP community meeting October 4th. Uh, we've got a agenda here that unfortunately was just created, so there's not really anything in there. But if you do have anything that you would like to discuss, please feel free to add it to this GitHub issue or just raise your hand in Google Meet and uh, we'll go through topics. So um, I guess first call, does anybody have anything you want to chat about uh, that's not in the issue yet? No? All right. Well, um, I will pick on Steve here for a minute, uh, Steve K, and just highlight that he's been working very, very hard on updating the generators that we have for client sets, informers, and listers to make all of them hopefully properly and without confusion multi-cluster aware. Um, he's also been working on some AST based tooling that you can point at an existing GitHub or existing repository uh, with controller logic in it. And it will do somewhere more than 0% of trying to automate converting your existing use of client sets to make them cluster aware. So um, that is in flight right now. Uh, PRs are open and we're getting Prowl set up. So uh, over the next several days, keep your eyes on that, and we'll be converting KCP proper to use the new uh, clients, listers, and informers over time, and we'll update um, the controller runtime example if needed, and uh, just make sure that hopefully anybody and everybody who's looking to use uh, clients, listers, and informers and point them at KCP for a, a multi-cluster, multi-workspace setup can use those uh, with a lot less confusion than we have today. So thank you, Steve, and everybody who's been working beforehand on those generators. Definitely really appreciate the hard work there. If we, I know somebody was looking at uh, refactoring, jeez. Uh, What's the, the straw man API we always use? Serve manager. Serve manager. Um, it, yeah, so if anyone's like, working on taking an existing controller and like making a KCP aware, I'd love to work with you to see how well automated refactoring tools work, work out the kinks. Um, also, if you've got APIs that you're generating KCP aware clients for, same thing. So get in touch. Um, I'd love to collaborate. All right. Um, anybody have anything you want to chat about today? Um, could be questions about KCP or KCP features, things that you've been wondering about, uh, PRs that you want to get some review time on. Um, any topics are good. If not, we can just look at the <laughs> one incoming issue that we have. Uh, one thing, uh, Andy, so there, there are a couple of uh, PR open against um, controller runtime example. And okay. I, I believe that it would be good to to, to look at that. There, there are a couple of improvements uh, in controller runtime examples uh, that would be useful. And it's no big thing, but uh, you know, make the things easier for people wanting to uh, uh, to develop their own controller. Okay, cool. Um, try to get a look at these. Do you have stuff in controller runtime as well, or just the example repo? Uh, I have one PR against the control runtime that's uh, for um, uh, updating the version and okay. bringing that to, to a new version. But uh, yeah, so. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, we'll, I will try to find some time to glance at these today. And um, Steve, or if anybody else uh, is interested in reviewing and helping out, would. Love some additional help there. So um, thank you, Frederick, for calling those to our attention. OK. Um, what else? Go ahead. Chris, I think you 
barely got in there first, so go ahead. Uh, Chris, I can't hear you if you're talking, you're muted. I was going to ask if you could give a short summary of the cell work that you had been doing. I've seen bits and pieces, but I don't, oh, yeah. I don't know much of the details. Yeah. Um, so Chris is asking about the CEL, um, which is stands for Common Expression Language, to do API conversions. And I uh, put together a demo, which I will grab a link. Hold on a second. Uh, this off of. Uh, so we have a playlist uh, for KCP demos. Oh, that's weird. The video didn't get in there. Hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm on YouTube. All right, I'll, I'll pull this up later because it's being slow. Uh, so we are working on a prototype to be able to do conversions of API resource schemas that are part of API exports. So if you're an API service provider uh, and you're used to working with CRDs where you can do conversion webhooks to convert between versions v1 beta 1 and v1 beta 2 and whatnot, um, we have a statically compilable and no webhooks needed um, approach to doing this. And I have some changes to our fork of Kubernetes and some changes to KCP to make this doable. Um, now, let's see, I found the demo here. So let me just paste this in here, CDL conversion demo. Uh, so it's about five minutes long. Um, please check it out. I am working on some changes to it. And there's a PackMD where we've been working through some of the ideas on uh, API evolution. So if you take a look, um, we talk about how are we going to do conversion. So um, here's a sample API resource schema. It looks very much like a CRD. So if you've never looked at an API resource schema before, but you're familiar with CRDs, it should look very familiar. You've got an API group. You've got the names, scope, and then individual API versions with their schemas. And you indicate what's served, what's stored, and what sub-resources sub are available. So in this example, I just have uh, a V1 that has first name and last name as two distinct spec fields. And in V2, I switched it so that you have spec name and then first and last. And this was a fairly straightforward thing to prototype with because it's just moving fields from one part of the spec to another and changing their names. So um, what I ended up doing is something that looks like this for the time being. So you create a separate uh, separate type called API conversion. And in its spec, you just list uh, going from V1 to V2 and from V2 back to V1. And you can uh, list out individual common expression language rules. So um, it actually, sorry, it looks more like this where you specify the uh, version name for where you're coming from, and then you tell it where you're going to, and you don't need to include a version name. And so this is able to translate between spec.firstName and spec.name.first, and the same thing for last name. And this works. Um, but there's a lot of conversion options that we may need to support. So what happens if I have a single value in one version and I need to go to multi-value, or what happens if I need to um, go through a list of things and move them somewhere else and maybe change the field name. So if you all have examples of CRD conversions that um, are not listed here, would love to get 
feedback on what sort of conversions you need. And hopefully we can figure out a way to make that happen. Uh, but it does work and the um, the code is in flight. So I'm continuing to uh, to make some changes and there's, um, I have a to-do list of things that I am working on. So if you're interested in the PR, it's 2105. And uh, so just things that are still to do is an admission plugin that validates that your CEL compiles and is valid when the resource is created, um, making sure that you're, that it can convert via a hub or as Steve was suggesting, just that everything is convertible to everything else in some sort of uh, some sort of traversal. Uh, so there's a bunch of stuff here. If you're interested in, in looking at the PR, please do. And uh, yeah, that was um, a short summary of what I've been working on there. Any questions on that? OK. Um, so I see the next hand. Is it Apoorva? Did I say that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, actually, this is regarding the PR. I was just trying my hands on. Andy, you might be uh, might be aware of it. So this is like regarding the uh, label, uh, the value of label exceeding sixty three characters uh, when we sync the workloads in a workspace. So I was just like a little blur on the next steps after our last uh, discussion on this one. Like, what should be doing? Like, uh, if those labels are not uh, being referenced in the source code, so what could be done? Right. Um, thank you for following up on this. Sorry. Um, I so the the labels here. I think I'll probably defer to David. Um, so we look through, or I look through the um, what's going on here, and basically we're we're generating labels that, as best I can tell, aren't used by anything. So. Um, David, any thoughts on this? Uh, I would have to look uh, deeper into it. Um, yeah, my suggestion was just to move these to annotations, unless we think somebody's going to be doing. Oh yes, sorry, sorry. Yes, label I selections on these. Sometimes ago, yes. Uh, it seems that yeah, it's not currently used. Probably something related to le to legacy, or so. I'd rather also. I mean, can we just drop them and then we can add them back if needed? Yes, I'm. I, I'd be okay with that. To be fair, okay. yes. I, I know I'm using those in my side gigs. So if you do something, do it faster than later. So <laughs> and before I build a lot of code around those. What so are you? What, what are, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. So no, it's, I, uh, it's easier easier to write like a controllers which are. I would say standard pattern where you just get an object and if you need to know which workspace it is from, basically you just go from the labels instead of going all the machinery and extracting. So the, we have we have the workspace or the logical cluster in an annotation and it's in every single object. Yeah. That is the I only mean, like, thing I'm, I'm, to I'm get. not against removing them. I'm saying like if you if you want to do it, I think better sooner than later. Because yeah, the, the, the type of use you are mentioning maybe would push us removing those because it seems that uh, it may give users, um, you know, IDs or the feeling that they can get yeah. the workspace name and and play with that and filter on this in ways that were not expected in in the in the whole. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. I think so. Yeah. I mean, at least that's my feeling. I don't know others. Uh, I mean, I, I guess are you trying to uh, are you trying to label select on logical cluster? No, no. It just was easy path. You get object, you see what you need in the data, and you start using it. So if it's there, somebody will start using it. <laughs> okay. 
uh, discussed in community call today. Let's remove these. Yeah, because yeah, the logical cluster is available in an annotation. Um, yeah, and as, as for the sync target, it seems that uh, we precisely, even for scheduling, uh, chose to use, um, you know, Mongol named and not surface the sync target names uh, on, on the resource. Uh, object. Yeah, it's, it's, so that, it's that these doesn't labels that um, nothing uses these. OK, um, so my suggestion is just to remove them. I mean, there, there's some value, I guess, you want to know where this namespace comes from, like which syncer you see. That's why we added them. So annotations would be the same. So if you want to keep so the value, we could use annotations. Yeah, I mean. And call, call it workspace if you want to. That's fine. Then I'm also fine with just dropping. Until we, we see a need to just drop them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, does that help, uh, Apurva? Yeah. So okay. So we'll be dropping these, and for now, yep. we won't be adding any new, right? Like Correct. for now. Okay. Yeah. That helps. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Next up, we have a discussion about extending the server in code to let you uh, add additional handlers, HTTP handlers. Yeah, this is, I'm, I'm building a basically a, a very similar kube native proxy that I, I was building before I came to KCP. And I'm now piggybacking on Sinker infrastructure basically for proxying from API to the clusters. So I need to expose some API handlers, which I would be exposing to the users basically. And I want to do it single binary, basically running everything. And I'm looking basically for the native way to extend the existing API server with some other handlers, which I can could inject, basically. OK, go ahead, Stefan. Yeah, I commented on, I think, I mean, there's a natural way would not be to use options, but to go through the server, get to the generic API server object, and there's something unprotected handlers or some, some field like that. That would be the natural place to add more additional handlers in front of the chain, so completely independent. OK, I got to I just and need to see that. that. I'm not that much familiar with like API yeah. server machinery in that depth, too. If it's not exported, we have to talk. But uh, okay. this should be the canonical way. OK, yeah, take a look and just report back if um, you don't have access to it because it's private. Yeah, OK. Cool. Thanks. OK, um, any other topics, anybody? OK, I'm going to just pull this one up since uh, yeah, this one, um, so you see this in the logs. There's this cluster authentication trust controller, which comes from Kubernetes, that keeps trying to do things with um, a config map, which actually stores the CA certificate that uh, external servers, like webhook servers, should be using to verify the incoming request from the API server. And if this is not populated, then they have to get the content from somewhere else. So this does need to be fixed um, oh. for anybody who wants to use this particular uh, config map, uh, which we're not currently populating right now, but we should be. So this is this turn on the controller by giving it uh, clients and informers and whatnot for root logical cluster, or is this? That's a good question. Um, I think there only needs to be one of these for the entire KCP instance. So I think this is a thing like doing what you just said and then telling uh, controller authors or, sorry, webhook authors or providing a utility function where it can get this for them. Um, but yeah, there there should just be one of them. I think putting it in a root makes sense. Uh, 
would be CA trust. Code so okay. Uh, so this one is now in the backlog, and that's it in terms of stuff to triage. So last call for topics, or we're done nice and early today. Andy, it's Andy. I'm just uh, letting you know I put an issue in for the next community meeting for October 11th. I created one and uh, put us in there for edge workload distribution okay. and some work that we're doing internally. Our demo is not ready for this week, but it will be for next. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, good to see everybody. Um, see you next week. Have a good rest of your week. Thanks. 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 Bye. Bye.